Hey guys, Sam here. Today I wanted to go through handling errors in your service pattern in Golang. Um, so I'm assuming everyone knows what a service pattern is, but um, very very quickly we have a service type, which is our service. This service could have you know databases embedded into it. It could have your logger, all types of stuff just embedded into that service. Um, and then you have methods on it, which are your service methods. So these are kind of like your um, your actual application code for a bit of logic in a service, right? So, for example, if you had a user microservice, you might have a sign up method on it, right? And the idea is you would pass your whole service along with its methods, obviously, over to a HTTP server or a gRPC server. And the idea is, again, you wouldn't want to have to change your service if you are changing dependency. So you wouldn't want to change like we wouldn't want to change any code in the sign up method if we're going to send pass this over to um a http server and we wouldn't want to change it again if we passed it over to grpc so that what i've had problems with with that is then errors how am i going to handle this being a bad request and then also grpc and others uh, know how to understand that right so um this is where generic errors come in right so Here's a series of generic errors, an error bad request, an error internal failure, error not found, right? These are typically your common response codes, say in HTTP or gRPC servers, right? So you would have a 400 bad request in an HTTP server, or you might have a failure, which is a 500 internal. Um, but obviously, uh, your REST server, your HTTP server and gRPC server will handle these differently. So this is the nice thing we can do. So f firstly, you could keep this really simple and I'm assuming everyone's heard of error wrapping so you can wrap in your generic errors so you could wrap in here bad request right so now we know that if someone provides an invalid email into our service method it's a bad request so what we can then do in our rest server and in our HTTP server is then we could go into that so let's just pretend this is a rest server you know we could then say if errors that is error Service dot error bad request, then you know return a HTTP uh, forex code, right? So that's a very simple solution to that straight away. But um, something I've been doing recently, which I think is has worked really nicely for me, um, is to actually create a error type. So obviously, an error in Go is just an interface that implements the error method, which returns a string. So what we can actually do is we can embed our application error, so our genuine error we get from, you know, um, in the service, right? And then also we could embed a, a service error. So we're considering a service error as one of these generic error messages here. Um, so what you can do here is we can have a function, new error, which takes in our service error and it takes in an app error. And obviously it's just going to return an error, right? Cool. So you can't use error, of course, because at the moment we need to go and implement that error interface. Like so, uh, we just want to return a string. And what you can do here is, there's multiple ways of doing this, but a very quick one I like to do is just errors.join. And then what we can do here is e.serviceerror and e.appError. And then that way in your error message, you actually get, you know, bad request and the reason, right? Um, Oh, that's because that returns an error. Oh, and then, yeah, easy way to do that is just to then call the error method on that. Cool, so a bit bit hacky there, but um, bear with me. Okay, so we have a validate email function. So let's just use that very quickly. Um, typically, in like, you know, domain-driven designs, we would actually have that as a, like a domain validation thing, but we're not using domain-driven design in this context. Um, so there we have a valid email and we have an error, right? So really easily now, what we can say is if error is not equal to nil, go ahead and return a uh, new error, which should be our service error. So we could say, you know, error bad request, and then also the application error, right? Uh, e is not used, but that's fine. Cool, so we've now associated a bad request with this error. So we now know if we pass this to HTTP or gRPC, that it's a bad request. Right, so this is where leads me on to the final thing, that's quite cool about this little error handling method. Okay, so what we want to basically do now is we've got an error HTTP package and we want to convert the error using errors.as, which the errors package in Go has some really nice stuff. 
Um, and what this basically does is it takes an error and it just tries to almost cast it to our, or type set it, I suppose, to our service error type. And this as function will only turn tr return true if it can actually do so. Um, so we need a couple of methods, right? We need a, a method to get the app error. And then obviously, as you probably guessed, we're going to need one to go and return a service error. So we have a service error. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to walk you through now exactly what else I've just done, right? So essentially what I've done is I've used the app error to go ahead and set our message on our API error response field. And I've also made a switch on our service error to then set the HTTP code on our service correctly right so the nice thing about this now is we have a service that returns generic errors such as a bad request and it simply embeds a the actual error and a generic error together so now if we pretend again this is our http server all you need to do here is actually you know obviously you can't return from a main function but what you would actually do is http error uh, dot from error and you would return just pass in your error and that would go ahead and return you uh, that would go ahead and set the status code correctly obviously if your server was set up to actually read the API error and the message right so the really cool thing about this and the what and why I think this is a really nice way of handling errors in your service methods is you suddenly might need to expose a gRPC server to your service right and you don't want to have to go through again, obviously, your service and replace all those errors to be gRPC specific. So you would simply just add, you know, a gRPC error package and you would have a from error, from service error, whatever you want to call it, function that again would just, you know, use errors.as, get it into your service error type, um, go ahead and set gRPC status correctly. So you only change if suddenly we had to swap this out to be, you know, to handle gRPC errors from this service method would be gRPC error from your service error, right? So yeah, hopefully this is a quick quick enough video. Um, I wanted to share it because this worked really well in some projects I've worked on and I'm hoping they would do the same for you guys as well if you use the service pattern in Golang. Um, let me know if there's anything you don't like about it, put it in the comments below, uh, but hopefully you get some value out of this error handling pattern. Um, it works quite nicely for me, like I say. So yeah, leave a like if you enjoyed and I'll see you later on.